Hello everyone and thank you for coming back to the channel And thank you for coming back to another episode of Don't be telling my business Or why are you telling my business And we know I can, I can, can and I will Okay, but I just wanted to let everybody know I did get my test results in yesterday I didn't want to say anything but <coughs> me and my daughter were talking and we were like, well, hell, they like family anyway. The only thing they can do is throw up more prayers for you, to, for you to get better. Okay, so I did get my test results back yesterday, and I did test it positive for COVID. Okay, 19. So y'all keep me in prayers. Um, the worst, I think, is pretty much over with because i was sick like uh, a week and a half before christmas and it really started getting to me a couple of days before christmas and i completely lost all my taste buds uh the day of christmas so or the day before christmas and i've been muddling through you know i'm on antibiotics i got on them on the 28th and um of course you know they tell you to do your teas Take your vitamin C. Ah, it's almost like going through the bad flu. Added bronchitis on top of it. Added on a pain your on your side is on it. And that's what we had. A mixture of total viruses going through my body. <coughs> and as you can see, I still have my little cough. I'm taking my Tesla on pearls. And I'm quarantining for another five days. And, um... Yeah, that's pretty much been the basis. Everybody got their test results in as positive. My 83-year-old mom, my son-in-law, um, he got his back and I got mine back. I all tested positive and my daughter, she's, her is still pending for some reason. I hope they ain't lost it. Uh, but they told me to tell her to count herself as having it too because we're all in the same household. And our house is not small, but it's not a mansion either, so... We cough, you know, sometimes without covering our mouth when nobody's in the hallways and stuff like that. But, you know, we use as much lifestyle and stuff as we can. But, you know, it just is what it is. So keep me in your prayers. But I am here to talk about, yes, Lord, we are here to talk about this. It ain't even a train wreck anymore. It has imploded. It's in flames. And then they had a nerve to give us to be continued I'm like like this is a movie or something or a sitcom I'm like what the hell is going on so Portia must have pulled whatever little string she had of pleading big and crying stomping shaking whatever to the real producers and they gave her another episode to try to clarify some of this mess that was going on towards the very end of this uh segment of uh what was episode one season well season um one episode five it should have been it should have been like wrapping it up like come to a closure but for some crazy reason they thought they wanted to give us a conclusion i'm like are you serious we got to go through another whole uh hour next sunday of this mess are you kidding me so hopefully um it'll be short and sweet but it just is what it is i have no more hope for portia when it comes to her reconciling with her immediate family uh trying to have a blended family because it's just not gonna work all of this she tried to say was at first her real life she trying to put uh things together where it'd be a better situation than what it was for her when she was growing up and having to have split families and this that and third and them fake tears that was coming out of her eyes i'm like girl give it up give it a rest okay i need you to go get a real acting coach so they can really show you how to formulate them tears where they become believable because i really didn't feel anything for you but empathy because what you were doing really since this whole show developed for you has just been a catastrophe just a, a real catastrophe like you know you always want people to have respect for your family your elders but you show nothing on the opposite side of the spectrum of, of showing respect and dignity to somebody else's family uh that was supposed to have been a blended family you were trying to put together and one thing oddly that came out of it simon didn't come looking bad at all he was almost the, the very much temperament they needed <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, where am I? Twilight Zone City? But, uh, yeah, let's just go on and get into the scenes. Because at this point, like I said, I don't care if Portia fly 
a, a fry at this time at this point i'll keep watching her i keep doing my interviews or, or reviews on her or whatever she's doing out there um because she's good for press she's good for my channel and you know I try to give words of wisdom for other people not to go to the devil's industry and make a fool out like yourself. And then you think you're supposed to come back. And people are supposed to look at you a, a totally different way. Like, no, that was just for entertainment. Now, no, that was your real life, baby. Because these other people weren't doing it for no entertainment. You were getting their real truth on your uh, show that's supposed to have been half real, half uh, entertainment. When I'm like, no, nah, you tried to spin it to us when it was coming on. This is your real life. This is what you're blending together, both families to come so we can all be one happy big family. Which anybody that had eyes to see and ears to hear, we knew that shit wasn't going to fly. We knew it because of the dynamics and the people that you were putting in position to play on the sitcom with you were no good. Where you get this Lauren, your assistant, I'm about like Dennis. She pretty much fired out there. You see all the comes and goings and all the truth she was telling on you. And Dom is definitely not your friend because if he can snitch on somebody else and bring you business back or what somebody told uh he had talked with you talked with them about you and what he heard that they were saying about you he can do the same damn thing to you Portia. so that's just two snakes in the grass and we sh at 40 years old you should know these things you should have a, a discernment about yourself if you're so godly because definitely the lord gives you that but getting on into scene one okay um Ah, oh, yeah. we have uh, Dennis complaining on where's Porsche and Simon, um, and and not these other non effing factor people such as Lauren, the assistant, and uh, Dom. You know they didn't really have to show up uh, again. I'm with Miss Elizabeth. Why were they even brought on the show other than to start mess? And I can see you putting them in the balance to start mess, keep up mess, drone up mess. They were your extras. They were your props. Okay, I get that. Got that good. Moving on. Uh, then we had Dennis venting to Lauren, uh, Dom, about uh, points with Simon and, and, and the celebrity ship. He 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 basically was telling Lauren and Dom that you're not my friends. Um, you're riding here for Portia uh, because you know I may be wrong or whatnot, but to me it just doesn't seem like you are there for me. And, of course, you know, Dawn was like, well, yeah, we're Porsche's friends. And Lauren was like, yeah, we're Porsche's friends, but we, we look out for you, too. No, you don't. He, he, he was setting them straight. He was t giving us, like, context clues, thesauruses, dictionary phrases, or what an op is. Um, and something else he had said that he had to put out there. And I was like, see, I like Dennis. I like the people that were referencing, captioning what these terms were meaning for elderly people such as myself that's not down in the streets that you know good about this new lingo slang talk they talking thank you for that okay so uh he was just saying you know he knows he seemed like simon seemed like a good fella but i haven't been around him that long we had a couple of conversations they seem to be kosher but i don't know you know and then he was saying you know he don't really know if he's down for Portia or just Portia celebrity ship and that's a good point man good point thanks for pointing that out because we don't know what his true motives is and Portia only seeing what else she want to see some people say she's on her spell some people say she just crazy as hell I say it may be a, a combination of the two okay but like I said this is her bed she must lie in it at this point there's no more saving grace there's no more like woo we need to con you know we need to pray for Portia yeah we do but then sometimes it's like give it up to God leave it alone and let whatever hell hell ha happens to her and that's how I put it you know I want her to do better, but if she continue to want to go down this road, you can't stop somebody. They got to learn for themselves. They got to experience their experiences, and they got to say enough is enough. I need to turn my life around, and, you know, you're preaching about the Lord. You're saying you know the Lord, and only the Lord can help you, but then you're doing other things that's quite contrary to what you said. Uh, from the beginning of the belief of knowing the Lord and how he can help you. Because evidently you don't want no help out of this situation. You're taking it all amongst yourself to make things happen. So you continue to go on down that road, baby. But anyway. Um, so he was pretty much telling, you know, Lauren. After he had to kind of get rid of them. That, you know, he's there doing the work. He's coming to every situation that Lauren has 
had for them to invest their time in on getting to co-parent more effectively than what they have been doing in the past. And I'm saying maybe because some fresh she came because she came so quickly with this guy, Simon, that, you know, kind of threw him in a tailspin because I guess he thought he's going to get his booty there and he's going to get his booties, his other side booties. But, you know, just didn't want to disrespect Portia altogether. Cause I really do think he has feelings for her. But if he has any after this point, after I thought was going to be the last showing of this, this uh, collapse of a uh, horrific mistake of making a sick a sitcom or a season or a special or whatever spin off we gave Portia you know maybe he's rethinking this idea too and I, I firmly believe he need to have his own show so he can clarify some of this stuff on his terms you know and let her make guest appearances if he deems it necessary because like I said when he was sitting up there at the table talking to these ladies and gentlemen he was really filling them out. They didn't even know they were getting sized up to get information. That's how stupid all of them was. Except for Lundy. And Lundy is a very crafty person. And I can appreciate her efforts. So, yeah. I'm I'm Team Lundy. Uh, wasn't at first because I didn't know where she was coming from. But she just as uh, methodical as Dennis can be as well. And she found some truth out about her so-called cousin. All right. But anyway, going from that situation, Dom, you know, he wants an apology from Dennis. And Dennis looking at him with them glasses on like, why the hell I need to give you an apology? Again, why are you here? You're not family. I'm not your friend. Portia really don't care too much about you either way. Either way, But I'm not going to tell you that. You know, that's the vibe that I was getting from him. And he was like, okay, go on and refresh my memory. And go on and tell me why you feel that I... Uh, you know, I need to apologize to you. And what Don was saying was just totally ludicrous. It was crazy. And I was with Dennis. No, you are a op, meaning you collect information to go back and tell somebody to make a, a worse situation worse. And that's what you did. You told on where he was tracking his penis. Uh, you know, the girl that he was supposedly that we never could find out about who he was sleeping with. Or had slept with while Portia was pregnant. One night stand. He even said it was a one night stand. Uh, you went and said it was one of his female friends that he had um, hired at one of his restaurants. Uh, the hot dog factory. And you know of course then it couldn't lie real well. You know which I don't even know why he was trying at this time to lie. But he said he got over oh, 600 employees. He he don't he don't know who he behind. Like <laughs> man, Dennis, give the go, give give it up, okay, give it up. You're not a very good liar, especially when you're being exposed on TV and people gonna come talk to you about it here and there, okay. But uh, you could tell Dennis was lying, and you know it was it just is what it is. He really didn't want, I guess, the lady to lose his job. He really got to have that piece of ass, and he just you know threw a caution to the wind, hope nobody found out. But in reality, Don found out. He took it back to Lauren, which is um, Portia's stepsister. And, you know, Lauren didn't really do too much about it because he said, like, she said they were family at the time. They were trying to work on their marriage. And I guess she just talked to Dennis on the side, like, you know, you really need to let the girl go. Get her out before anybody else finds out about her. And then, you know, we can't say the story anymore. So I was like, uh. And I'm like, Lauren, I think you've been a little bit too invested. And, you know, uh, <laughs> I, you don't want to get hooked up into his charismatic ways, which is Dennis. Because then you're going to be one of his uh, tall tails or a notch under his belt as well. And he's not going to look at you no more than, you know, what whatever happened that night. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be easy what it is. He's not going to let you blackmail him. He's not going to, you know, he's just that type of guy. So don't, 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 don't drop your drawers, baby. Don't drop your drawers when you're feeling kind of lonely around him. Okay, because it is what it is. Candy Birds tried to tell y'all, but y'all didn't listen to them. Because the streets were talking. I don't know if she was getting it from Mama Joyce's streets or she was getting it from, you know, uh, Tiny and, and Toya and Rashida's them streets. Who knows? But she got it from the streets and she tried to give uh, Portia a lifeline, but she didn't listen. Okay. Um, then we had Lauren assistant asked why and, and what do they know about Simon and again you know she was trying to throw her truth you know I ain't been Portia's assistant less than a year I'm sure and she's giving her observation on what she's seen how Portia deals with conflict it's not a good situation da, 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 da. then like you don't want your job you're gonna be fired when this is over with and he wasn't laughing he was like girl you selling too much don't you know we go back and we look at this afterwards and she's gonna see all this and you're talking about her you should be talking to her about anything around me and da 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 da, da or even agreeing with me 
And, you know, pretty much it might be that situation. She'll keep her on till she can find somebody else and then she's going to cut her. Okay. Uh, just like they cut a scene in a film. Then we got Portia comes in to see Lauren and, and says Dennis needs to state his truth and intentions. You know, she's over in Lauren's uh, bungalow or hotel suite room, whatever, while Lauren was trying to meditate, get her little groove on on all that. And uh, Portia's feeling some kind of way. And, you know, uh, she's talking about Mama Gina. And uh, she don't want Mama G Gina really integrated into her family. And Lauren looking at her like, you are one stupid itch. What are you talking about? This whole thing was about you. You know what I'm saying? What, what are you, where are you going with all of this? You know, this is something you wanted. You didn't want this. I was just assisting and, and, and uh, fa facilitating things for you. And then you don't even want to show up to nothing. You ain't been here for nothing. You're not taking accountability. You're blaming everybody else for your ill feelings towards the situation. And you need to do better. Now, of course, Porsche, like, mm -mm, she got her guard. She did that in third. Uh, she's still on the gun of no real interpretation or integrating Mama Gina into her family because she wanted it for a Pilar, but she says it's going to be a Pilar and Grandmama thing. She ain't going to have nothing to do with it. And I'm like, Portia, 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 you don't know anything about parenting, do you? You always have to be the bigger person in any scenario for the sake of your child having a happy childhood. Now, what she formulates on her own when she gets in middle school, high school, and she gets to see how the tensions are and how people connect and disconnect, then she can ask those questions because she's formulating her own ideals by being in that environment and coming up with her own conclusions because kids are smarter than what you think they are. Then you had that conversation with her. And then, you know, she can kind of see, well, yeah, she don't treat my mom right. She talked to my mom this kind of way. Or my mama talked to her this kind of way. I don't like how she talked to my grandma. Like, you know what I'm saying? So the child has to come in and mend those bridges, those fences, so they can formulate a better relationship with the two entities of the family. And that's the only way it's going to work. Of course, you get too much invested in it. They all should be about her when they ain't got nothing to do with her at all. But this is the story and the lie she wants to tell us. Okay, Portia, um... You know, Portia goes on to tell Lauren that, you know, we was in the the, the ocean. I don't know what the hell that, that thing they wore, swamp or, um, I don't know what they call it. But they were jumping in this sea that had dead souls in it and stuff. And uh, she was saying, you know, when we was down there in the den, she ain't say nothing. You know, she was trying to skirt around. You know, I guess she just wanted to say, Portia, I hurt your feelings. If I hurt your feelings, I'm sorry. She just wanted her to come out and just base it on Portia. And it wasn't about Portia. It was about um, Mama Gina's feelings about certain scenarios, certain situations, and how she was going to deal with it. Not who she offended. It wasn't like, okay, let's go and say, well, I finished you Portia this day. Or I finished you London this day. It wasn't all about that. It was just taking accountability for what you felt about a situation. And can you do better? Not just putting the situation on blast for everybody to hear. You know, and Portia wanted that type of... Uh, acknowledgement or something I'm like girl sit yourself down somewhere so she was still harboring on that and again Lauren was trying to pull her back to center to say baby it's not about that it's about you doing better for yourself and the emotions you carry with you because you can't change nobody else but you can change the reflection on how you deal with that situation how that situation is making you feel do you have to separate yourself do you have to like count to one to ten to get through the situation and then move on but it ain't like you pointing out other people's flaws when you got a plank in your own I need to get regard that first that's what Lauren was trying to tell her but of course you know Lauren is the more <sighs> logical reasoning one and Portia's just out there on flight 99 10 somewhere you know what I'm saying I, I don't know okay I feel bad for uh, PJ because she's gonna need a lot more than Portia raising her when it comes to her fundamental values and stuff uh, but hopefully the Lord would take care of that as well alright it's all about putting PJ in prayer now forget Portia <laughs> forget her all together okay we just hope uh p she don't have no mishaps over there where dennis gonna come up and pick up the pieces and he gonna be so custody of that child you know what i'm saying because right now he's only looking like the best person fit because you can't catch him in anything else but being a womanizer and a whore but you know he seems like he got his financial revenue streams running real well he has a good head of business on him uh he has feelings you know 
uh, about how things are supposed to be and how respect is supposed to be displayed. But like I said, when it comes to the women, he he gonna need some extra therapy on his own. Okay, but um, moving from there, Porsche is all about bashing Mama Gina constantly throughout the whole segment of this show uh, or this um, episode. Uh, Pilar, uh, no, uh, she was trying to say. Uh, Pilar just has to have two separate type of families you know you're gonna live one side over there she's gonna live one side with them and you know she didn't want it for it, but that's how it is I said no Portia that's how you made it didn't have to be that way you could have just fell all the way back let people walk into their own nets let them hang their own selves you know what I'm saying with situations and circumstances that they want to be privy in and it's not a good look you ain't always got to set them up they're gonna set their own selves up let their own downfall be their own downfall and you take no pleasure in it you just be like well try to tell you peace deuces you know but uh then Portia gets on Lauren but she don't have the tools she wasn't given the right tools to be able to express herself and learn from the different events that Lauren was having she's like baby you ain't been here you know you got your spirituality tools you got your logical reasoning tools you got your people skills what's going on what, what do you mean what do I have to give you when did you ever come stop you know by my door and say well you know I've been thinking about this that and that do you have anything I could use to help me with my expressions of how I'm feeling or how I can deal with this person a little bit better you know stuff like that she's like you ain't never came to my door about that and she said yeah you're right you're right but Portia don't want to be here i seen that from the first time she really uh got on the show real housewives of atlanta she wants to be a thought she wants to be uh the pretty one and she wants to use her body her assets and that's the only two things she has is face and her body and she thinks that's going to get her through life <laughs> sadly but true it has been getting her through life but she's been having a lot of ups and downs and mixed emotions to go along with that package she's processing and delivering to people okay in the industry um uh, but uh let me see here then we got uh Portia goes out and says she's fixed Jesus got her uh <laughs> then Lauren tears right on into Portia again giving her the true tea the true business saying no you're not fixed okay no you, you're not losing the Lord properly in your life either Portia I got God <laughs> and I want to say what God honey what not the God that I serve because mm -mm, we wouldn't be doing this kind of mess and mockery and fuck foolishness around here that you got going on all this fraudulent fake foolishness going on Portia that ain't got the Lord nowhere in it that's you that's you and all this uh, devilish things you want to do to make money baby don't put the Lord don't, don't know and I'm apologize I'm apologizing for putting my uh, cuss words into the same sentence with the Lord because that that's right that's wrong that one right either so please forgive me but it's just like you know Portia to get on your nerve like you just really want to pick up the strap and just whoop her to you see the white meat or something you know what I'm saying because the, the, the stuff that she be saying and doing just don't have any rationale and it's not entertaining either it's just woo, it just makes you like you want to have a headache Whew, okay but anyway we almost we saw after this episode because it was just a hot mess okay a hot hot mess and I'm glad it busted com com to a total combustion but then they want to bring the fire department out later on to renew it revive it and show us these extra scenes I guess Portia went back and begged them to put in there so she won't look so bad but Portia you still gonna look bad baby still gonna look bad you should have just let it end it uh how we left it and, and moved on but you didn't they put it something in because technically it should have ended tonight. Tonight in my Bernie Mac boys. Um, then Portia, you know, she, like I said, she says she has her own God. She 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 knows what she needs to do. He helps her out all the time, as we all know. That got good reasoning sense and can see very well. Portia's not in the reality that we're in. I don't know what plane of existence she's focusing and, and and practicing on at this time, but it's not in the same reality that we're living in. Okay. Then we got Lauren asked Dennis, "Is it really one?" with you is it really over with you and Portia and he kind of like half-heartedly said you know hey it's been over about you know two three months you know she with Simon now but that really wasn't a question he was invading uh being evasive he he really wasn't uh answering the question how it was posed to him and maybe he does have some residue feelings but as the time approaches on towards the end of this um uh, episode I don't think he's going to be trying to put the pieces back with um Portia only to just co-parent because they need 
they, girl, they need Jesus. They really do. All each and every one of them needs Jesus. He needs to come in and formulate. And maybe just like like I said, it's not a good look. I think Portia just entrapped him in a sense. She know he liked the butt. He, she know he like the ussy. And she pretty much just laid it down on him. And, you know, with a couple of drinks and this, that, and the third, he didn't see Portia not being a good mother or anything for his child. If he wanted to really sit down and have a discussion with her, pro probably before she enticed him, got him all liquored up, got him feeling good, and, and, and she wasn't trying to take no type of birth control uh, controls to prevent a pregnancy. Then, yeah, it happened. And it's not like he was really treating Portia like a one night stand. So, this is what it is. They made a pretty baby. They might as well just go on and deal with it and then try not to reprocreate and make any more children unless they get into another way of thinking and living. Okay? Then we got Lundy, Dennis, Lauren, assistant, Dom. They go to the tequila bar because uh, Lauren has set up, Lauren, the sister, has set up different events for them to partake of because she you knows sometimes therapy can be a little bit daunting and they need to have some other activities to keep them motivated and keep them interested in learning a little bit more but having a little play time so i understood that got it good got dennis said he uh broke up with uh porsche three months ago and he really felt that it was over just that and third he didn't really want to talk about it because he he seemed like he's that type where he'll tell you just a little bit but just enough to get past the scene he don't really want to really really elaborate on it unless it's something that he really got pissed off about then they call in dennis uh work the girl he brought which is his work uh method of introducing a woman a uh, female companion that's what he calls work okay uh, he gave us a dictionary glossary of that definition. I never heard of it before until Dennis came on the scene and told us about it. I thought, you know, a lady was a lady, girlfriend, uh, companion, something to that degree. But I guess that's a slang, young way of saying, you know, his women, his woman companionship or women companionship. He called them work. Okay. And uh, it seems like lauren the assistant was kind of giving us a vibe that she's bisexual or something because lundy was throwing her under the bus saying you know uh lauren's looking at her how she was jiggling her her panties was jiggling her butt was jiggling and she kind of liked it so instead of them calling dennis girlfriend or, or female companionship for the night or the weekend they call her miss thing okay they gave her a title because they liked her they found out the girl was 30 years old dennis had confessed to them uh, but no one said about how old um, Simon was when they brought him up in the mix, of course. Um, but then Lonnie had took up for Portia and said, well, you know, Portia's not young either. She's older. So she was just saying, I guess, the difference between the ages. But still, we talking about almost 20 years apart from them too, uh, Lonnie. So that wasn't a good save. Then um, Don and his... Uh, I don't know. I, I don't like Don. At first, I was trying to lean to liking him to a certain degree. Because I know, you know, gays are messy. You know, just like regular women are messy. You know, but it's, it's a certain degree of messiness you do not need to be evolving yourself in. And Don just went overboard. And he went on and started talking about Darlene Storms, uh, Stormy's mother when she did that Holy Ghost dance act, praise and worship. I, we don't all know what she was doing. I was kind of confused and a little bit thrown off uh, at her playing with the Lord like that. But it just is what it is. And they were reenacting for Dennis uh, what they felt, what they saw. Uh, her dramatic effects were about and you know Dennis was laughing too not you know very overly doing it but he was like okay okay I could see what was trying to transpire and if I was storm I would have ran the hell out of there too and I would have been there right I hell I wouldn't even been there I can tell you the truth I, I would have missed out one but anyway um, on the next group we got uh, Portia Simon Lauren her sister and Stormy they go ATV riding which was something they we didn't have to see you know old Papa Smurf was up there meaning Simon acting like you know he was disgusted with getting on something so nasty and so outdoorsy and it wasn't plushed or polished for him you know he couldn't smoke a cigar he looked that kind of scared really well really what he looked uh like to me you know like he was very much so out of his element he shouldn't have been there he didn't want to be there because it wasn't a cigar in his hand and it wasn't a drink in the other one you know what i'm saying but he was trying to be with the kiddies and he said let's get it on or whatever i was like oh my god this is too much 
Then, uh, like I said, it was a very boring scene. Uh, Portia broke a fingernail, and she thought it was just uh, the crashing of the world. Stormy was commenting on her boobs and how the sun was glistening. I like what kind of what? Where are we going with this situation? Total high mess. Then we have a little scene where Elizabeth and Gina were in the pool. They're expressing themselves. She telling uh, Elizabeth Jose Williams' daughter, telling her, you know, technically I think you should have been a little bit more closer to the family, the family dynamics, and you know it was kind of boring. I guess they didn't want to tape anymore, so they kind of froze their scene went off of them then we got uh dennis them back at their little shot with all of them taking shots and telling secrets and and um getting smashed and um what's her name uh lauren the sister was telling them to slow down because they were drinking too fast just telling the third then we we back at <coughs> Uh, telling the truth game. London wanted to take shots and tell the truth. Uh, you know, which was going to come up to be a hot mess. But I guess they had to plant that little story in to kind of juice it up a little bit. Because technically, like, Portia's uh, song flatline, the whole scene had flatline. And we were looking, well, like, well, what's going on? Where's the real juice? Where's the real action? We need something to perk us up. So, um, you know, uh, she says like a truth or dare game. You have to tell the truth or you have to take a shot. So they went on with their questioning and Don asked the question. Uh, somebody asked Don if he could have sleep with anybody. I think it was Lundy. If he could sleep with anybody at the hotel of the guests that were staying in their parties, which one would he uh, choose? And he chose Elster Child. That's uh uh, Diane, Portia's mom, friend, the real estate agent, and she was going around shaking her tail feather, looking a hot mess, looking drunk at that. But Don said he would want to get with that. I was like, okay, moving on. Uh, then Lauren said some stupid shit. I, I can't even remember what she said. It wasn't even worth repeating because I couldn't remem remember it to tell y'all, okay? Then we go to Portia. Like I said, she broke her fingernail. We're going to move back on to Don. Them. Don tells everyone Portia might be pregnant because she didn't. He noticed she wasn't drinking last night and this, that, and the third. She had uh, Simon to take her drinks and stuff. She thought she was having Coca-Cola, da 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 And, you know, uh, that kind of, like, sparked up the interest to Dennis. He wasn't know, well, was she pregnant? Is she pregnant? Then Lauren's sister said, well, you know, she took a couple of pregnancy tests around me and no, it came up negative. So, that was something like, mm, it, does that really disturb Dennis? Oh, really now? Okay. But, like I said, it could have just been scripted in. Nothing really fantastic about it. Because we're all still trying to figure Portia out one uh, millisecond at a time. Okay. But, moving on from there. Um, Dennis asks, uh, Lundy, why does Portia treat you so bad? And, Lundy just said, well, Quite frankly, because I don't kiss her ass. I pretty much tell her what I feel about a situation, how I feel she's acting at the time in that situation. I kind of move on, you know. <laughs> I was like, high five, London, high five. She don't be putting up with Portia mess. And so, uh, then Don asks, what is, what's going on between him and Storm? You know, what's the real tea? And then, you know, uh... It didn't seem like Dennis really wanted to answer him, but since they were playing the game and he, you know, had asked his questions and stuff, of course, it was brought back to him another question. He said, well, because Storm is a liar. She's a liar. She's a liar. She's a liar. You know, she was saying nobody ever gave her a birthday party. I gave her a birthday party just to, you know, kind of ease her attention of what she didn't get when she was younger or whatever. Um, she talks ill uh wheel to the managers and the people that are over her her co-workers she has no you know uh what do you call it she has no uh professionalism by herself or how to conduct herself and talk to managers uh and she just got on my nerves and then she has you know she has talked to me in certain ways and you know that's got like insubordination we're gonna have that just because i know or i'm dating your cousin that's not gonna be nothing like that and then, you know, she was trying to say Dennis was always on her ass, you know, always, you know, riding her ass, you know, you know, cussing at her or fussing at her and these things. But, of course, you know, Dennis has his own story about it. And it's always two sides to a story anyway. Um, and then Dennis goes in to tell us about what ops are and this, that, and the third and, 
you know how he feels a op is a person who's trying to gather intelligence on you to use it against you they jealous they petty you know just all negative stuff they want to be you in a sense and he was just giving us the update on those circumstances right there then we got London was saying she got into it with Storm and Dennis said her and Storm never really liked each other. And she's like, yeah, because uh, Portia always taking up for Storm. She can say this, that, and the third. And she knows she can, and she knows Storm wrong, but she still take up for him. She said, I just got, you know, like, okay, I let her have it or whatever. And she, uh, Dennis was saying, well, yeah, because she really, out of the whole time that they had been messing together, which was over a year and a half, uh, they never really hung with each other never had really too much to say to each other now they best buddies he said mm, that's very interesting uh and then again like i said um lauren assistant was just dropping too much personal tea on Portia, and he dennis was telling her you know you you you, you too much you know you, you too much you're gonna get fired you're not gonna have a job and she was looking all stupid i'm like oh the look ran out of you when he said that because you really need this job huh okay girl all right uh, I don't know why she remind me so much of uh, uh, Candy Burr's assistant. Uh, can't what's her name? Car Car Carmen. She reminds me of Carmen for some reason. But anyway, uh, Dennis is supposed to stunt as the op because you know he keeps saying things and doing things, and then technically. Dom exposes himself. He the one said everything. Went back to Lauren, telling Lauren about the girl that Dennis supposedly has slept with, and he just be telling Dennis's personal business. And you're not supposed to do that. And you know, Dennis was talking about a fade, meaning fighting with the young man. He owed him a fight because he just don't know how to keep his mouth shut. It's a man code. It's a bro code. Don't get involved with somebody else's business unless you're asked to tag in to help with the situation. Other than that, keep your mouth closed. Keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? Uh, but, you know, Don was acting like he understood the situation and he was playing along with Dennis. But in actuality, Dennis wasn't letting it go. He knew he was the op. He knew the man didn't like him. And it was just, it was going to be what it was going to be. But he made it through their little tequila, um, event and, 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 you know, handled himself accordingly. And then, um, Lundy was like, well, damn, you fired Storm, you're going around firing everybody in the family. And, um, Lundy said, well, why did you fire me? And then, it's like, he was hesitant, like, oh, okay, Dennis, you're on the hot seat, you're going to have to say something. He said, well, you got to ask your, your cousin Portia, because she told me to let you go. I'm like, ooh, girl, you're talking about my mouth drop. And Lundy was speechless, too. She was like, what? What? And then, you know, she went... And uh, did remember some times where she stopped really working a lot for Dennis. And she was trying to figure out what was what. Because she had to substitute her income with more jobs. Because she was working for Portia. And Portia really wasn't giving her too much of anything. And, you know, Dennis was doing everything. He, he was giving her definitely good catering event jobs. And she was working, you know, every day. Making her high, high top dollar and things. And for some reason, um, I guess Portia got mad at Lundy. And told Dennis, you know, fire her. She can't work for me and you. She just work for me and get what she needs to get and whatever she gets. And he just say, hey, chat with your cousin. This this is what I was told to do. And that's what I did. Which, you know, that was piss poor, Dennis. Because you don't let a woman come in and run your business. Especially if she's doing a damn good job. Regardless of the scenario or the situation. But uh, he did. And um, that's where that shit went. Okay. Then we uh, get into the last part. Which I know y'all are pretty much ready for me to end. Uh, cause it was traumatizing to me as well, towards, in, until the end, and when they were dropping all that tea, uh, at the tequila bar, cause that's the only way I got any information, cause the other shit wasn't, wasn't playing out, I'm glad they didn't show it, uh, either, cause it, 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 it was just like a snooze fest, very much so snooze fest, but anyway, everybody meet up at this, uh, this, uh, restaurant called Marbella, Everything seems to be in aesthetic order. Everybody liking the optics, the seating arrangements, and all this kind of stuff. And Lord have mercy. Portia go asking how did the day go with the people that was at the tequila bar getting down drinking, taking shots, and all this stuff. To me, I think it was scripted. It was brought in there to dramatize everything up. Kadon got the snitching. He got the telling Lauren about what him and Dennis said talking about, about 
coarser and the girl that he had slept with while she was pregnant and Dennis had fired the girl then Dennis bought the girl back on payroll uh after he had promised Porsche he was gonna get rid of her which you know my thing like with Porsche she gotta stop trying to uh boss people around I mean again that was Dennis mistake he made it but this girl also needed a job to uh uh, take care of herself and her family or herself and that was unfair for a woman to get chastised that way when you ain't even doing chastising your man so why are you gonna let that lady lose her job because your man was wayward you know what i'm saying and he said it was a one night stand and if you don't trust him leave him alone altogether. just co-parent and, and move on with your life that's it straight up front and all together but you know i could see porsche's point of not wanting that situation to reunite itself but he could have put her at another location you know what i'm saying he could say okay i ain't gonna let you lose your job i know you need your job we both got in a moment it is what it is shit everybody found out but i'm gonna have to transfer you to another location and that could have been the end of it and it could have solved both you know problems but you know it just is what it is okay then we got elizabeth and gina and, and um they were talking and then you know everybody was just fussing at the table Porsche was t telling everybody you know uh you know because i think stormy had said something and Porsche, i mean uh dennis had got up and said something to the fact that um uh, you know cussing stormy out again telling her to shut the fuck up and all this kind of stuff and i'm like stormy if she 20 years old she's a grown adult she need to be able to handle herself ain't nobody no child until they got teen on them you know what i'm saying teenager then you can't really say too much because you know you're just going off they anger and they getting on your nerves and you just blow up at them but when they got 20 uh and on up they better be ready to take the heat if they're gonna dish it out and that's just the bottom line you're stepping in a grown folks arena so you're gonna have to get tossed around your feelings may get bruised and hurt you may come out of it you know better than you went in understanding the dynamics of the conversation and the situation okay but then again you might come out scarred for life i don't know but when you enter in the ring with grown folks that's been seasoned for a while you may get your feelings hurt so you always have to take that in consideration when you're trying to be in a grown folks fight but uh fuss fight at that but <laughs> child they were just up there hollering screaming yelling Porsche was uh telling uh dennis he had to go there ain't gonna be no more telling uh uh cussing his uh cousin out uh he had to go his slut had to go but the slut girl wasn't even there so i'm like it made me think she was talking about mama gina she was taking digs at mama gina uh by saying slut because the girl wasn't even there so what is Portia talking about she wasn't in the table she wasn't in the vicinity she wasn't nowhere she wasn't even on television we didn't even get a chance to see miss thing okay but i think it was altered because what i saw from what they were trying to play up as the ending scene was totally different that's why i believe she did go in there and beg plead you know barbara stole whatever got to the producers and said give me another scene we don't need this to pretty much get cause i believe it was between her and mama gina that's just my belief and i'm still gonna go with it to this day but i think they did some altering they went back in the uh editing room and taped some things and it came out to be that dennis and her were uh trying to touch hands with each other over mama gina because she was constantly just talking running out the mouth just being real loud and agitated and you know uh feelings were already on high alert and, and, and Simon going around there patting Dennis on the back like, you know, his, he the uncle or something. Saying, just calm down. We'll handle it. We'll, we'll get to the bottom of this. I'm like, nigga, sit yourself down somewhere. You know what I'm saying? You have not been here. You've been on a uh, life support system since the very beginning of family port, family, porch family matter, matters, whatever. You from since the inception of this show, you have been non existent. Now you wanna get up <laughs> and act like grandpa and you gonna get this situation straight now. Everything's gonna be okay. Just we wait and see type of therapy going on. Sit your ass down. But anyway, um yeah, uh she was saying uh uh security security and all that stuff and, and going to the door like she's gonna escort them out herself uh like she's some queen on a throne on a throne want to behead somebody and she was calling dennis mama crazy and 
you know, uh, 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 she was saying, get your slut, your crazy mama out of here, you get your crazy ass out. Oh, just, just all this, you know, just hollering at the top of her lungs. And I'm like, Lord, this child on flatline and, 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 and done killed her own self and her show. Because you just don't talk to uh, parents like that. You know, you may not like Dennis' mama. Like you don't like gum underneath your uh, Louis Vuitton shoe. You know what I'm saying? But guess what? It's there. Pick it out and keep it moving. You don't talk to PJ's grandmama this way. That's just, ooh, that's sacrilegious. That's just, that's not good. That's, ooh, that's juju. That's bad karma. That's everything thrown at you, Portia. Because I'm sure you wouldn't want Dennis telling you the same words and talking about your mama that way. You know what I'm saying? So, it was just terrible. It was a total shit show. Okay? And then, you know, oh, it was just a whole mess. Then, you know, at the table I did hear before everything got real out of control, Miss Gina was saying, see, that's why I want to be a part of this family. That's why I want to be a part of the Williams family. Then Miss Elizabeth said, no, nah, you at the wrong side of the Williamses. The Jose Williams side don't act like this. You, you got it wrong. You, we don't act like this. We don't get, I said, see, even Portia's family is turning on her. That shows me right there. They did not want Portia in the family. And it was all because of her mom. They probably saw her mom. Portia's probably the mini-me of her mom. Everything that we're seeing Portia play out on the screen was probably played out uh, on Miss Elizabeth's brother and how Jose, their dad, felt about Portia, how their mother probably felt about Portia's mom, and all that good stuff. And it, it's just turning the, 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 the bad cycle a karma you know just like um uh, when she was trying to explain to lauren when she went over to lauren's uh room telling her well you know i always wanted to have a better family dynamic than what was given to me because even when your mom used to try to come pick me up to take me over to your house uh she never would cross over into our house to pick me up and say hey to my mom and this that and that i said because she didn't want to f with your mama she probably knew what your mom was all about you were a child so you had to stay in your child's place and she didn't want to fill your head up with negativity that's the mom that's true mom so lauren had a good mom and that's why she's probably so moral uh she has a moral compass much more better than what your mama taught you. She didn't want to mess with. She didn't want to mess with your mama, but she didn't want to blame the child for her mom's misdeeds. So I have to salute uh, Lawrence, mama, that I wouldn't have came over there in the house either. I was like, baby, come on on to the door, honey. I would have treated you like royalty once you stepped out. But when you trying to go into somebody else's house that you know was it right that you were in a situation going through the situation with uh and you never know diane probably will probably call him you know starting shit with her about trying to get her husband back from her you know you just never know but i'm telling you i really want i really in my heart of hearts was thinking that portia was calling mama uh gina a slut a hoe and all this stuff underneath the tonation that she knew that girl wasn't there that word Dennis had brought into fruition. We didn't see her. They didn't get a glimpse of her. You know what I'm saying? They made sure they ain't added her in. Because they probably would have to cut her a check. But anyway, it was a hot mess, y'all. It was a hot mess. So after this point, it's all like pop going on Porsche. I don't get her no holes, no breaks, no nothing. I just call it like I see it. When we talk about her mama, how I get down on her mama. I'm going to have to get down on Porsche. Cause Porsche don't, she don't, uh-uh. She don't went over. She in the deep side. She in the darkness. She is totally in the darkness now. Sitting up here uh, throwing uh, Dennis' mama out. When well, she should have been throwing her own self out and this damn show. Because it's a hot mess. Hot mess. And it should have stopped today. Today should have been the last scene. But now we got to watch this train wreck again. Okay? And I'm just punishing myself. Because I ain't got to watch it. I ain't got to watch it, y'all. But you know me. Curiosity kills the cat every time. But that's all I got, y'all. I know it was kind of long. Take it in do small doses, you know what I'm saying? But I had to give it to you like I saw it. And it was just a hot mess. A hot train wreck mess. So if you can't take it but, you know, 20 minutes at a time, pause it. Come back and get some more wisdom. Because I dropped a lot, honey. I dropped a lot. But Portia on her own. Portia is on her own. Let her go on down that aisle with Simon. And let her find out all the death. Oh, because the disaster's headed her way. But that's all I got, y'all. Keep me and my family in prayer. Like I said, I had the COVID. They diagnosed me, told me my results yesterday. And uh, it, it's going to be all right. It's going to be okay. 
I rebuke it and all the things that have come to uh, have de definitely taken a lot of people home with this COVID. But like I said, I think I got over the, the uh, brunt part of it. I suffered about a, a half a week or, well, no, a week and a half, I should say, before it really started coming on me. And that was around the Christmas time. So I'm going towards the light of the end of the tunnel, but... The rest of my family, you know, are doing some things. My mom's cough has gotten a little better, which I'm glad because I didn't want to have to take her to the hospital or anything. So we're going to keep watching and monitoring the temperatures. You know, it tends to go up at night and uh, things of that nature. But with all you guys' good graces and good prayers coming my way, I know I will get better. All right? But y'all be careful, especially the ones that live in Atlanta or Florida. We are the hot spots, and it seems like people just want to throw caution to the wind and don't want to tell you that they've been infected and want to still live life, and you end up catching it through the vapors in the air. You know, because I really think it's airborne. You never know when you walk into a situation where people are, have sneezed or coughed because they're not there anymore. You think you're breathing, you know, good air, but you're actually breathing polluted air. So always wear your mask and, and, and stay safe out there. And if you're feeling the symptoms, you know, try to do the over-the-counter stuff first. But if it's not getting better within a couple of days, go to the doctor, get tested. Okay, so at least you'll know what you're messing with and it'll be on record in case something else uh, major comes up with your health. Okay, but I'll talk to y'all soon and I'll see y'all next video. Night-night.